Well, there's no need thanking me. Uh, I owe Tab uh, much more than I uh, have ever or could ever repay, but uh, I was very uh, uh, grateful for the chance to come spend a few uh, moments with you today. And uh, I, I will uh, not be able to resist reminiscing, but I hope as I do, you'll understand I'm really thinking more of this great institution, this, uh, um, this uh, anchor of, um, of my life than I am myself. Um, <clears throat> Someone once asked me, said, what do you get when you cross a Unitarian with a uh, Jehovah's Witness? The answer is someone who beats on your door for no apparent reason. <laughs> <laughs> and um, in our family, uh, over the years, uh, we used to ask ourselves, what do you get when you cross the United Methodist with a Syrian Orthodox, because my mom was raised in the Methodist Church in Monongahela, Pennsylvania, a little town uh, down the river from Pittsburgh. And my father, uh, son of uh, uh, an immigrant, uh, was, uh, two immigrants, was uh, raised in, in the Syrian Orthodox Church in a town across the river called Manesson. So I don't know whether it was a negotiation or some just sort of weird cross-pollination, but after they got married, uh, down, starting down in um, Atlanta, Georgia, then Bristol, Tennessee, and then when I was about 10 years old, Indianapolis, they, they became Presbyterians. And uh, happily so for me. Um, uh, among the best friends mom and dad ever had, so many of their best friends were people they met at TAB, but probably at, at or near the top of that list was, were two names familiar to many of you in this room, Howard and Patsy Jansen. And um, we hadn't been in Indianapolis very long. I don't remember, uh, I was pretty little, I can't remember whether they were uh, church shopping or how long this went on, but before they'd been here very long, there was a knock at the door one day and a deacon from TAB named Howard Jansen was there. And he uh, told them how much uh, he would, uh, he and his fellow the church members here would love to welcome them, try it out. And as far as I know, that one, one visit took care of it. They were TAB members the rest of their <coughs> lives. Uh, and uh, as, as I have been, uh, Patsy Jansen sang um, at our wedding at uh, one, two, three, I guess three, at least three of the four Daniels girls' weddings. And a couple, and then my mom and dad's funerals, and uh, so uh, we were we were woven into the family and the fabric of this church from very early on. Um, the first year that we were members was the first year I was part of Tab Recreation, and many of you will recall this. I mean, Tabernacle Recreation T-shirts, different colors, but they all had the same circular, you know, that circular logo and so forth. They were as ubiquitous in this town as Nike or something is today. I mean, it seemed like every, ki every other kid you would meet had one. And uh, uh, what a great uh, ministry that was and has been ever since. I still remember during time on the session, the YMCA of Indianapolis coming around and saying, we can't make anything work in the inner city anymore. You're the only folks that can. How are you doing it and could we possibly team up? So through good years and bad, you know, Tab has always been there and, uh, in that way. And, um, and I, was, uh, I was a wholehearted uh, and enthusiastic participant in it. Russ Earl, who, who doesn't remember Russ Earl? Was, you know, he had some John Byers and many other great people followed him. But I mean, he was just a, an institution. And uh, uh, just undoubtedly helped shape the lives of, of countless young uh, uh, boys and girls uh, here. I was a choir kid, that's how we were referred to. My mom and dad sang in the choir forever. Um, mom was the one singing alto, always about a half a tone flat. <laughs> but with such incredible gusto, you know, she, she was, you know, and some of you probably remember my mom, she was memorable person. People to this day come up, you know, oh, your mom, you know, she was redhead, little firecracker type. And uh, uh, she was, because she was kind of short, she was always in the front row, big smile. And uh, 
so uh, just every Sunday, it would be Sunday school and uh, first, uh, first service, and then we'd be excused, I guess, for Sunday school, depending on what age you were. But then um, um, those, there were three or four of us whose parents sang, and we would go up to the choir loft uh, and wait, they, they'd sing right th uh, through till the sermon. And then we'd finally go home. Um, now, sometimes I'd take homework up there, but many other times, a couple of us uh, we would go exploring. I know every square inch of this place. <laughs> we went places we were not supposed to go. I mean, you know, you're a 10, 11, 12 year old kid, you, you want to look around. I mean, and of course, I love the fact that. Uh, it's uh, all through the years, and uh, certainly because in large part of the endowment, we've preserved it and protected it, and it just looks the same. And uh, I like things that stay the same. There aren't enough of them these days. Um, then, um, the, uh, along with John Gable, the uh, pastor that's had the most influence and the longest uh, influence in my life was Byron Crozier. Uh, friend of so many people here. And uh, Byron used to say that, he says, in the, the, my job is to hatch them, match them, and dispatch them. <laughs> some of you probably remember that line. So I mean, that's, and that's us with the Daniels family. I mean, he baptized the, the, the girls and, and, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, married, uh, married uh, me and my sister. Uh, and then uh, was, was still there when we lost at least uh, mom. So, um, uh, you know, just a, a, a magical uh, person. Uh, Tab's had so many great leaders, but uh, Byron was, the, was certainly the one that, uh, that who, whose tenure uh, spanned the same, spanned the, 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 those important events in our lives. And uh, we, uh, we talk about him, and uh, Sherry and I do, and Beth all the time. Sherry was real close to Beth all the way through uh, her life. They were they were big chums, and uh, and uh, you know we uh, we miss her very very much. Um, uh, I've, uh, I've I should have done much more than I've done for Tab. Sometimes life got in the way. I lived out of town and two different times, and that, that I guess that's a partial excuse. But um, you know, 60 years plus now for me. You know that, that kind of annoying thing that, that we do on Stewardship Sunday, you know, everybody stand up and then you get to sit down, you know? This Sunday. Yeah. Well, it's pretty effective, but uh, gosh, to still be standing there when there aren't too, uh, too many others, is, it was, it was an, an experience I had to get used to. But um, I did have uh, a, a, a couple of terms, I guess, on the endowment board. and. I want to second everything Steve uh, said about, it, about its importance. I mean, its centrality to the success and the, uh, and the uh, uh, ongoing life of this, of this church. Uh, I, um, I was on the session for a good long time, too, and there are people here I served with then. And I just uh, will always be so proud of things that this, this place has done. Um, during that time, we made the first ma major donation from the endowment that created the Oaks Academy. Ultimately became a, st a stunning success, first by bringing together people of different denominations. Um, you know, we had, it was Tab really, I think, this should, gets the credit. It was people here, Don Fisher and others, and then the endowment fund and so forth. Getting, wouldn't have got started without it. But, Pretty soon we had a Lutheran curriculum and we had a partnership with some Baptists, uh, other churches down around there. And I remember how, how uh, surprised people were when I told them that we were in sharing the old school building, the old school 45 building. School didn't need it all with the Catholic local ministries. And they said, well, now that's, that takes it all. I said, we get the you know, Lutherans and the Baptists and the Methodists, the Presbyterians, but if you've got the Catholics uh, uh, going along with it, you've, you've pulled something off. And uh, you know, all these years later, now there have been thousands of kids go through there. Uh, they have the highest uh, test scores in the whole state, right in the middle of Indianapolis, just down the street from here. Uh, that doesn't happen without the people of TAB or without the endowment fund. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, 
Uh, and I will just say that uh, at the, at, I had, I've had so few low moments in my life, but at, at probably one of the lowest, it, I happened to be on the session. It was people at TAB who uh, sort of uh, helped me uh, uh, see my way forward, and everything, of course, uh, worked out. But, um, you know, the way this place lives its faith, John reminds us to do this from time to time, I suppose. Most of his counterparts at other places do, but how many places live their faith the way Tab, Tab does? Uh, Billy and I was was updating me over here on the uh, on this on the food pantry at the soup kitchen here, all the people it serves, the clinic, the legal clinic, uh, all these things. When when mom and dad joined this church, you wouldn't have called it suburban, but it was at the, you know the, it was toward the north end of the residential area of Indianapolis. I guess we were living at 7100 North. And sort of the, bound, the edge of civilization was 80 something, right? <laughs> I mean, Carmel was a cow pasture. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in the, yeah, the pre-roundabout era, yeah, that's right. Um, but the... Uh, uh, of course, the, the town kept moving north, and then there was Second Pres, and I, I just remember a number of our good friends and so forth. It was just so much more convenient. Would have been for mom and dad, too. I mean, our house was five minutes from Second Pres. No, it was, Tab was home, and uh, they stayed, as so many of you did. And the town kept moving north, and decades later, it's, uh, I guess, it's, I mean, it's accurate to call us an inner city church. I'm really proud of that. You know, I'm really proud of that. Proud that we stayed and proud that we are in a place of, of greater need. And doing all those things I mentioned and just simply being here as a lighthouse and, a, and I hope a, 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 a harbor for people who um, uh, may not have a lot of joy in their life and maybe looking for a, uh, a, a spiritual home. Um, regret to say, we live in now in an age uh, so different than the one I've been describing, an age that's not only more secular in many ways, but even hostile uh, to uh, things that uh, we believe in, things we know to be true. and. Um, but that's not the first time that the faith has been under, uh, under pressure. And um, the, the way we at least try to live, things we uh, stand for, um, I guess stand as something of an annoyance or even a reproach to other people who want to live in a, in a, more, uh, in a way that's a little more self-centered. But uh, how important TAB is, how, how extra important a place like this is uh, at a time like that. Um, I'll give you two, there are, so two reasons, as I thought about today, two reasons that I'm excited about TAB's future and that I'm optimistic about it. Um, uh, one of them is that uh, a, a, a maybe the most uh, pronounced social trend I see in society now. I see it on our campus and I see it among young people, but I see it in general, is an increase in loneliness. And there are all sorts of very plausible theories about where this has come from. I mean, it's pretty, it, the data is very clear. People report having fewer friends, you know, folks in their uh, uh, mature years, but also young people. Young people don't date at nearly the levels that they did not very long ago. And again, report having very, very few close friends. Is it the fact that everybody's communicating like this? That's got to be part of it. I mean, something has changed in a major way. Um, I got a letter just a couple days ago from a parent. Um, I guess of a freshman. Anyway, um, uh, said a lot of nice things, really, really uh, uh, appreciative, I think it was an alum also, about things that are going on at our university, but said, you know, here's something that bothers me. And he attached the recruitment brochure, or one of our recruitment brochures, which I, 
in all honesty, had never seen. Big glossy thing, probably 16 pages at least. Uh, I'm no designer, but you know, I, it's really crammed. Every page, you know, has got tons of information and pictures and so forth on it. I guess somebody thought it was a good idea to get it all in there. Uh, but he said, look what's not there. He said, I know you have all sorts of faith-based organizations on campus. And you know, I see your cultural center for this and your, you know, uh, clubs and then the, the Greek organization and everything else. He said, where's, I can't find any mention. Well, he's right. We have, I mean, the largest organization on our campus is St. Thomas Aquinas for our Catholic uh, students. As the priest there is fond of pointing out, we have more Catholics than Notre Dame. <laughs> <laughs> but right behind that, we have something called Campus House. Uh, I've, I've gone over to services there when, on, uh, on weekends when I can't make it home, and it's jam-packed. We probably violate the fire code. And there are, there are a host of others, um, and I know you know, in a, in a community of young people that size, this is a real anchor for all these, for so many of our, our students. It's a huge blind spot on the part, I'm gonna fix this, already put it in process, a blind spot on the part of our folks not to include that prominently among those offerings that we extend to young people. But I just tell you that because um, out there there's an ocean of people, young and some not so young, who uh, are more uh, uh, lonely and isolated uh, than uh, maybe people have ever been. And at a time like that, places like this and people like those who make up TAB um, are, the, uh, uh, are, gonna, are going to be more important than they've been. And I do believe that folks who are, uh, are, are floating in that sort of sense of of, um, of isolation uh, will uh, find their way to places like this and we need to help them uh, to do that. And then the other reason that I think that the uh, years ahead of us are very, very promising is sort of geographic. A little more prosaic than what I just talked about but maybe this is important. So if for 50 years or something like it the town grew away from Tab. I see the town growing toward us now. There, you know, no one used to live downtown by and large, and you know what's going on there now. So, in in ever closer proximity, you've got a lot of these people, many of whom I am convinced are the very folks I just talked about, who have grown up in this atomized um, society, and and uh, who. Uh, know something's missing and know that they and, 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 and yearn for some greater sense of connection and some connection to something you know more important than work and you know video games and here we are and here we are in large part Steve reminded us because there was an endowment that uh, is there to protect our future and allow us to build a future um, whatever the next soup kitchen, health clinic, Oaks Academy might be, um, we want to be in a position to do it. So uh, I just appreciate the chance to come back and, and uh, be reminded of what this place has always meant uh, to our whole family. And uh, certainly want uh, the endowment's been in, in uh, our estate plan for a long, long time. And, uh, life remains as kind as it's been, um, we will make uh, that, that fund substantially bigger here. I hope not prematurely, but. <laughs> <laughs> at, at Purdue, uh, we have get lots of endowment gifts, you know, that, and I have them once in a while. I say, show me the actuarial projections of when the money's actually going to show up, you know, if everybody dies on schedule. And, <laughs> and at Purdue, you know, like whoever has my job in about 2029 is going to look like a hero. <laughs>
But it doesn't matter when, you know, the, the fact is we, if anything any of us can do on whatever timetable God has in mind for us, to see that this place remains and is ready as the world comes our way, geographically and as the world comes our way socially, uh, that's, a, that's, a great, uh, that's a great way for us all to pay back this place that's meant so much, I know, to us all. Thanks very much.